I completely deleted my first intro. So, here we are again. Hello everybody, long time no see. Um, it has been almost exactly two years since the last time I made a video. And um, some of the reasons is just life. I got a new job, so I moved first from a house to an apartment, then from an apartment into a house, and uh, I got engaged, and life's been busy, and then a global pandemic hit. And then I got furloughed from my job. Um, so now I have some more time on my hands to pursue things like this. Um, the other reason that I haven't been making videos is I just really hate video editing. A lot of people who are on YouTube um, are really good at video editing and it's, it's a hobby for them. They really enjoy it and I don't enjoy it. Um, so, trying to do like pre-planned videos in a way and writing a script and and planning out my shots and stuff is not at all what I enjoy but I was talking to Noelle over at Costuming Drama about letting go of perfection and Noelle vlogs her sewing every week and I love her vlogs and um, I share my sewing every day on my Instagram and so she kind of encouraged me to get back to making videos but to do it vlogging style so that's what I'm doing, and all week I've been recording what I've been working on for you guys. Um, it's been tough since I have been furloughed. I've been sewing full-time. I've been doing a lot of hand sewing, and um, the first week it really took a toll on my wrists. Um, this this video encompasses week two of, of furlough for me. Um, so week two has been a struggle um, on and off of my wrists. Um, being too sore to work. I've, I, spoiler alert, I've moved through it. I've, I've come up with, you know, I've been working on it well. Um, but the problem is that I have so much hand sewing that I'm doing. So I'm trying to fit in projects that have less hand sewing um, and do different things. The main thing that I've been working on is my wedding dress. And this is half of it um, because it's like a wrap bodice. So this is, this is half of the bodice. But, um, so you'll see me working on this. There's a lot of hand sewing in it because it's entirely couture techniques. Another thing that I've been working on is um, like my getting ready robe, a fancy robe. And it's this gorgeous border print silk. And um, again, it's, it's all couture techniques. So it's a lot of hand sewing. And I'm actually at the point on it where there's no machine stitching left. So I still have to um, finish the waist seam. I have to finish all of the um, skirt seams by hand, but I have pressed them, so it's just really catching it down to the underlining, and I have to hem it. I've also been top stitching the belt, which was a poor decision, but I'm doing it um, because in couture, you usually do a lot of hand sewing for like top stitching and under stitching because it's softer finish than on a machine. Machines make very tight stitches, so it makes the fabric become very stiff. And this belt is underlined with um, already fairly stiff cotton flannel. So um, by top stitching it by hand, it's it's leaving it with a softer finish. I'm afraid it'll be too bricky if I were to top stitch it by machine. And I'm top stitching it because I do intend to wash this robe. I need to wash it. I soaked the silk in gelatin before sewing with it to make it easier to work with. Um, so it needs to be washed. I'm hoping that the uh, flannel will continue to soften as I wash it. So I do intend to just throw it in the washing machine um, but as I was turning this belt right side out I realized that it would be really tough if the flannel got all tangled up in the wash it'd be really hard to press it out so I decided it needed some top stitching to keep it in place um, so that is all things that I've been working on um, I've also been pulling things out of my UFO bin in an attempt to have projects that aren't gonna tax my wrists, but again, I continue to want to hand stitch on them. This is a Morris blazer that I finished, that I cut out like ages ago, and I finally um, finished, and it took me like an hour to sew it up just on my serger because it's a knit, um, but it's like a really thick double knit scuba, and so um, to under stitch the facing and stitch it top stitch it down, I really wouldn't like the finish and it'd be very difficult, so um, I do want to under stitch it by hand and then catch the facing down by hand. And I do intend to do that, but it's just going back in the UFO bin now that it's been sewn together um, until I can make that happen. 
Um, I've also been working on some napkins out of my UFO bin. And um, I want my dream world would be to actually uh, do drawn thread work embroidery on them and hem stitch around the entirety of the napkin. But I've done drawn thread work embroidery before and I know how long it takes. And I know that I would A, never finish the project and B, it would just be more taxing on my wrists. But that's like my mentality of do hand stitching on everything. Um, so I am trying to save my hand stitching for the couture projects and I'm trying to um, also incorporate in other non-couture projects so that I can do things with my time and sew and accomplish things with my time but save my wrists. The other thing that I've been doing with my time in addition to making videos like this is I'm, I'm just trying to put out more content into the world. So I've also started a Patreon account and I've already had so much love and support um, from my Instagram on there. And I put out a video on my Patreon um, with everything that I know about bias tape, all my secrets to using bias tape um, because I love bias tape as a finish. It's a very nice finish, it's a very popular finish in the tour. So I put out a video on my Patreon um, with everything that I know and love about bias tape. And so if you're interested in that, um, you can check me out. I'm Ms. Jen Makes on Patreon, Ms. Jen Makes on Instagram, Miss Makes here on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I hope that you enjoy the vlogging format. Let's go back in time to last Sunday um, when I started vlogging, but um, I deleted my original intro, so. Ah, uh, dang, see, this is why I actually wish I hadn't sewn this bias binding on because I follow a process in my mind of sew bias binding on, understitch, then trim. And I had it sewn on, but I hadn't understitched it yet. So I started to trim and I started to grade and I graded away my shortest layer. Um, and it's just harder to understitch when you have like some really short layers like this. Um, luckily it doesn't appear to be too bad so far, um, but I am, I did forget, almost forget to understitch this. Um, and since it's a binding going to a facing, I'm only understitching the facing portion because that's all I actually need to do. Um, the binding, it doesn't matter if it rolls away nicely or not. Um, this is again where, especially because I have a lot of layers in this bodice, um, I'm understitching it by hand to prevent this edge from feeling super stiff. Um, if I were to do it by machine, it would just really compact down all of those layers and it would be so much stitching in this area. Um, it would be really stiff and not lay nicely over my shoulders. So I'm understitching just with um, a back stitch, prick stitch, uh, I guess you could call it. Um, this is always how I understitch. It's very quick and easy and very secure and it actually does like tighten things down in a nice way which is important um, but not at all as much as it would do on a machine so that's what I'm doing now then I will go back to grading that seam and um, press the facing over and start to under uh, to catch it to the facing so almost played myself had to come back to what I did three days ago and remember where I was in my project, um, but I think I'm on top of it now. Okay, so I got the bias tape sewn on to the edges of um, the front and back edges, that is, and I pressed it over. Um, I do need to go ahead and put the stay in. Um, the stay will be put on, on this side of the fabric, but it will be going right along the stitch line. So I need to do that before I understitch it, which means that I need to put it on and measure how much I want to take out with the stay. Which means that first, I should really finish up um, stitching this seam binding on to the bust seam because right now there's a lot of pins there and I will poke myself um, in the boob and it will hurt. So. Um, I guess I have to work on that for a little bit, or as long as I can. This is like really tiny stitching, so it is, um, more painful to do, but, um, it's got to get done eventually. Uh, on this one, like I'm almost done getting the curves, 
and the straight bits will go pretty fast. Um, this one looks like it has more curves. Maybe I'll skip some of them. Um, no, I can't do that. But So I'm going to work on that for a while, uh, this teeny tiny binding. So here's one of the things that I am trying to get through this week um, is out of my UFO pile, some napkins that I had cut out around Thanksgiving time and never actually sewed. They're pretty wrinkly. They're just linen. Um, and this is again like I wish that I could hem stitch these napkins, but that's just not not the smart move to do right now. I'm trying to do projects that a don't take me six months and b um, save my wrist a little bit. So some of them I have. Um, well, you can't quite see. Some of them I have the selvage on it, and I'm actually going to leave the selvage on it. Um, I'm mitering all the corners, but I'm not going to press up the selvage edge. I'm going to leave it raw. So what I'm doing is I'm doing like a little half miter thing. So give that a press. And now I have this little half miter um, that is what I'm going to use on the edge of all the, the selvage pieces. I'm not really being, again, too specific with this mitering, and I'm not even trimming it right now, because every time I try to trim a mitered corner before I'm like really well and done with it, I trim it too much. So I'm gonna leave it maybe until after I sew it, um, maybe until right before I sew it, and then go in and just trim it up a little bit in there. The rest of the sewing that I've got done today it's just, um, I finished one of the bust seams and I'm now I'm halfway done with the second set of bust seams. And so I only have this left, which is not very much, shouldn't take me too long at all. Really happy with that progress that I made there. Lots of hand stitching. My wrist is like feeling weird. Um, it, the pain is moving around. I'm wondering if it's some sort of weird nerve thing, honestly. Um, I feel it up in my fingers. I was feeling it earlier today, like in here, base of my thumb. So um, I don't know what my wrist is doing, but I was able to do those stitches for a bit. So that was good. Um, so last night, So yesterday I finished one and a half of my seam bindings. Um, so this is one, this is the half. I only have um, this one left to do and it has less kind of arches than anything else so it should go really fast. My wrist did okay. Um, the pain has moved like up into my fingers so it's like being really nervy and I don't know, that's weird. Um, I also went grocery shopping yesterday and um, made cooked Tatchatory, which took a couple hours, so um, I did some other things yesterday that weren't sewing related. And then last night I got fabric mail, which is very exciting. Um, so I got my first fabric from Mood um, that as part of the Mood Sewing Network that I'm a part of with them. So I got this, um, it's called Growing Distant Cotton Wall, um, and it is a panel print, so it's... Um, heavier, it's like a border print, except um, instead of the border being printed on the selvages, the border is printed straight across the cross grade of the fabric, fabric. So I'm able to cut, for example, a top and have the um, border be on the bottom of the top going up, but still cut the top on grain, as opposed to having to cut it on cross grain, which you'd have to do on a selvage border print. So I'm really excited about this. Um, beautiful weight cotton wall. Um, and I'm going to be making a 1950s top um, from a 1950s pattern, so I'm really excited about that. So I washed that last night, and I also washed these two silks that I have. Um, I washed them all together since they're all blue. I'm really feeling like 
intense blues right now in my wardrobe, so I've been buying fabric like that. Um, this is from Stone Mountain and Daughters, and it's a dead stock crepe de chine. And um, this one is also from Mood, and it's a dead stock silk charm mousse. Um, so you can see, hopefully, this one is like really, really shiny compared to the crepe de chine, which is matte and a much drier hand. At the grocery store, I was trying to buy gelatin because if I soak these in gelatin, then they will be easier to work with, but they were all out of plain gelatin, and I'm definitely not going to soak them in jello because there's way too much sugar in that. Um, so I think that this fabric might have to wait. I don't actually have a pattern picked out for it anyways, so um, that's okay. Um, the crepe de chine just has so much of a drier hand. I think it's still going to be... Um, okay to work with without the gelatin. The charmeuse is just too slippery to work with. Um, so I still think it's going to be okay with this. And I uh, rubbed off a um, White House Black Market top that I have that is like one of my favorite like businessy shell tops, but it's polyester and um, it, I feel like I get stinky when I wear it. So I want to remake it in a natural fiber and that's what this pattern is for. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's on the docket today. I want to finish this seam. I want to get, um, this project started. Um, maybe look at cutting out this one. Maybe not, not sure about that. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, I think those are my goals for today. Um, my bobbins for my machine are supposed to arrive tomorrow. So I might not do any sewing on these. Um, until then, but I did because I did buy thread for them as well um, with those bobbins that are coming. So I might wait on that. And um, once I finish the seam, then I'm going to start putting in the stays um, around the neckline, and I can move forward on this, and probably also start putting in the boating channels. So yeah, that's my plans for the day. I'm actually really excited how this looks. Um, now I just need to pin out the excess um, volume that I have so that I can know how much um, shorter to make the stays than the neckline edge so that everything will fit really closely. I am measuring out my stays and I measured the neckline and I wrote down in notes how long it was and also how much I wanted to take out. So um, for example, the front neckline was 16 and a half and I want to take a whole inch out of it. So I um, marked my beginning point and now I'm going to measure out um, 15 and a half. And then mark it. And so now I know that's my shoulder seam. And then um, I'm continuing down for the back since it's all connected. Um, the couture book says you're not supposed to do this for some reason. It says you're supposed to do different ones, but I don't see why not less bulk to have two stays meeting up at the shoulder that already has a lot of seam lines going on. So the back was 13 and a half. And I wanted to take out, initially I took out three quarters of an inch, and then I found that was too much when I was pinning it. So I wrote plus one quarter. So I want to take off a half inch. So that makes 13 on the back. And I mark that. And now that's my back seam. And I can cut it and start pinning it to my edges. Um, and I'm just pinning it directly over the seam. I already did this one and I pinned it and I steamed the crap out of it and then I sewed it on, um, actually by machine, um, right on the outside of the previous seam. And so now it's all shrunken up and you can see from the front it's uh, not puckering at all, it's not doing anything, it's uh, really smooth. So now I can understitch this bias tape and flip everything to the inside once I get that done on this one. So I'm going to start by pinning my marked bits to um, their corresponding areas. So the shoulder seam to the shoulder seam. It's 
really hard to get the pin through this really narrow twill tape. And then I'll go down and do the back to the back. And you can see now how um, how much is being take out, taken out, but um, it all kind of eases in nicely. And I'll start by just literally folding the pieces in half and, you know, finger pressing the tape in half, finger pressing the bodice in half. Line them up, put a pin in, and then I'll keep doing that again and again and again until I have my pins about an inch apart as I found uh, enough for this. can see with each pin that goes in, the amount extra looks a little less and a little less until I can get it to pretty much lay flat. And then I'll put just a couple pins in there to hold it in place. Ow. And then I'll go give that a, a big steaming before I run it through the machine. And actually when I ran it, through the machine, I ran it on this side so that I could see my previous stitching line and stitch just to the outside of it. I have to flip this pin around so that I can pull it out so I don't sew over it. So yeah, I'm just, that's how I'm easing in the fullness and so that it will hug my body. And also not stretch so much on the bias, but that's not a huge concern for this just because um, when I cut my pieces, I cut the underlining on the bias so that actually this bias edge is the straight of grain um, so that it wouldn't stretch, but then I'm pinning the tool tape in so it doesn't matter that much that I did that. Um, but that's just kind of for all areas that maybe don't have the stay, um, giving more support to the garment in different directions. So today I got through understitching one of the um, bodice necklines before my wrist kind of started to feel not so great so I did go ahead and grade it and press it so that'll be all ready for me to um, stitch down to the underlining once my wrist feels better hopefully tomorrow and I still have another half that I have to under stitch but I did get the stay sewn on so that's all good um, then I cut out my mood project. Um, have some bias strips. They go around the neckline. Um, I think it's going to be really cute. It has the that's the scraps. Not much left. There we go. I think it's going to be really cute. It has the flowers kind of growing up from the hem um, up to the top. So I'm excited to sew that one up. I'm going to sew it um, tomorrow. Hopefully my bobbins will get here within a reasonable time frame. And then I can put some navy thread on the machine and get at that. I also cut out this silk um, crepe de chine top that I wanted to cut out. Um, so that's all cut out. I've got like the the flounces for the sleeves which are really pretty um, and left me with like perfect circle cutouts that I cut so I'm see if I want to maybe make a flower or something out of it but I think this top is going to be really pretty and hopefully not too difficult to sew but we shall see. So that's what I got cut out tonight and hopefully both of these can start getting sewn tomorrow. Um, so pretty good, pretty good progress today, I would say. Um, I'm going to ice my wrist again tonight and 
Hopefully I can get through this tomorrow and get on to stitching in the um, boning casings. Which one will go here, one there and there. Um, so I will work on that all tomorrow. I got my new bobbins for my machine and I had to kind of guess at these because um, Wawak didn't have my machine listed for it. So I measured my bobbins and then I found other machines online that use the same bobbin size and then found one of those machines listed on Wawak and, and compared, but they look like they're the same size. So um, I think that I made the right choice, um, which is great. So now I have lots of bobbins to be doing multiple projects at once. I also finished my bodice, um, the neckline facing um, is all finished and the stay is pumped up in there. I am not super happy because it seems like my roll pinning um, was not the most successful. It's kind of puffy on the inside and that would um, be indicative of this underlining being too long and the roll pinning should have made um, these outside pieces longer so that um, the underlining wouldn't be puffy like that. Uh, everything looks really smooth on the outside. It's just not super smooth on the inside. Um, so I'm a little upset about that. Um, it might just be, like it might be because this is actually the bias, like the width direction is the bias for the underlining because I cut the underlinings so that their straight of grain would be on these angles. And maybe it stretched out a bit, but I haven't been super successful in um, shrinking it back out. I'm probably going to keep pressing it. beautiful thing about putting silk organza on the outside is I use that as a pressing cloth a lot of the time anyways to protect fabric. So I have no issues with pressing on the outside, pressing from the inside, and just keep pressing and try to kind of shrink it out. Um, but it is really getting close to being... Um, structurally done. There's still more that I'm going to be doing with it. Um, I had to put the boning channels in now, so there'll be a boning channel here and boning channels here, and potentially, depending on what my try-on looks like after, a boning channel here, but that might be something I even add, like, after I put the skirt on. Um, and then, after I have those done, I will get to put it on my dress form and drape the tool layers over top. I did a terrible job of putting the back, so I think and hope that's why it's a little tight in my throat right now, um, but I'm getting close to done on this top. I have to finish the armhole seam and um, do the buttons and buttonholes, obviously, and bind the neckline and hem it, and then I'll be done, but I'm just like, Super excited about how it looks in this print. Huge improvement from <laughs> my muslin. I am sewing my buttonholes um, onto my shirt for mood. I'm almost done with it. Um, and so I've switched to my Juki home machine because my industrial machine can't do buttonholes. But I am really happy with the buttonhole features on this machine. Um, this is a pleasure to do buttonholes because my old home machine, the computer was messed up and buttonholes would stop in the middle all the time or just like keep going in length and it wouldn't register the end of the buttonhole and it was a whole mess. So uh, these make really beautiful buttonholes and I'm so happy with it. So this morning I put the buttons on my mood top. So now it is all done. I'm um, really excited about it. I think it's so cute. I'm not going to take pictures of it today because the hole has only like 58, so um, that's going to be a task for tomorrow when the high is supposed to be 68. Um, I finished my napkins this morning, which I don't even have down here because I just went and put them upstairs in the china cabinet where they belong. So those are done. I might actually move on to the matching placemats that I had planned. 
Um, I'm starting on my copy of a White House Black Market top that I have in this really pretty fabric from Stone Mountain Daughters. And um, so I have started sewing that. This is crepe, silk crepe machine, and I did not gelatinize it. So we're gonna see how it goes um, until I rage quit, basically. Um, <laughs> hopefully it goes all right. And then um, the wrist is, has been not feeling not as great today. So we'll see about getting onto the boning channels. Um, I might just start them on the sides where it's going to be easiest to sew them on. The, the busting boning channel is going to be the hardest. So um, might get started on those today. Might not. We shall, we shall see. But um, yeah, getting lots of, of work done on these other projects. Um, lots of experience on the new machine. And I sewed all the napkins like as fast as I could down the sides. Now I have the machine rate limited to like half of its actual speed capabilities, but it was that was some good practice for me. So to start for this blouse, I'm um, needing to narrow hem some edges. Uh, this is like a gusset piece that goes under the arm and this is the armhole flounce. And I'm finding a lot of success using my favorite method for achieving a narrow hem on delicate fabrics, which is to actually serge it. Um, and in this case, we're not using the serger to protect the edge of the fabric from fraying at all. We're actually using it to make the edge of the fabric more stable and also to gather it slightly because the problem with curved hems is that the outside edge is longer than the inside edge. So when you turn it up, you have a lot of extra fabric that needs to be eased in. So I just run it through my serger um, with the differential feed set one click above one. Um, it's a little too much for this fabric, but I leave long tails and then I can actually like smooth out some of the fullness. Um, so I do that and I, I try really hard to keep a nice curve and then it becomes very easy to press over once. The first time it's on the um, first line of stitching and um, if you know from, from a lot of hems, if you do a line of stitching, it becomes easier to turn the fabric on that. And then when we turn the fabric again, it's on the um, edge of the serging, which just provides a really nice stable edge to get a nice curve. And then I can run this under the machine um, right on the edge of the fold and it'll do a really nice job. So um, I'm glad that it's working for this fabric. I, was, I do it a lot on like cotton voiles and batistes, but I wasn't sure it would work so well on this silk crepe machine, and it does. Um, so yeah, very pleased so far. I've been working on the copy of my ready to wear White House Black Market blouse, and it was going really, really well. Um, I had told my friend Addie that I thought I was going to um, make myself suffer by sewing it without gelatinizing it first, but it actually was going really fantastically. Um, the, the collar went in really nicely. Um, it's kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of like square on the bottom, but it goes into a V. And I hand sewed it down on the inside, so it's all clean finished, whereas the original is like searched around there, so it's really nice. And I started to work on the side seam, which is kind of weird because it has this gusset, and then it goes into the ruffle, and... Um, I was like, I'm going to do it all French seam, and that's a really weird French seam to do, like, kind of two seams meeting up into one, but I managed it, and it's all French seamed and really clean and, and nice and everything, and the ruffle is on inside out. Um, so you can see the hem goes to the wrong side. There is just ever so slightly less perceptible... Um, color intensity because the print is on the wrong side of the fabric compared to the the right side and I don't want to fix it I don't know if I can fix it because if I rip out two seams in the silk it might shred it and I can't just flip the hem to the inside because the hem part is trapped down here in this seam so I don't know what to freaking do. I might just leave it 
but I'm really mad. And so I'm going to put this away for now before I do the other side. Um, cause I have to think about, am I going to do the other side wrong on purpose as well? So that at least it matches. So yeah, pretty mad about that. I think I might, um, my, my hands and my wrists are in a lot of pain today. Um, so I don't think that I can work on my boning channels, so I might pull out my plans for the original, um, placemats that were to go with my napkins. So, I might look at those and start trying to cut those out just to, to work on something else. <laughs> So I last recorded on, um, I think Thursday and I was like, oh, my wrists are hurting. So maybe I'll work on, um, placemats, but it didn't happen. Um, I decided to just go ahead and basically entirely take Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, um, for my wrists and they do feel a lot better. Um, I didn't take it off completely cause I still went and finished this top, um, and then I cut out a pattern for my next non-hand sewing project. I'm going to make another Sienna Makers jacket. Um, so I didn't take it off completely, but I did take it off heavily to um, help my wrists. And I think it did help. I'm still icing them every night. Um, so, and then it was really beautiful outside on Friday. So I got to take photos of this top and my mood top, both of which are finished. Um, oh, I did go ahead and just sew the other ruffle on also inside out on this top so they're both on inside out and you probably can't tell on video I can tell but I'll just have to make another one um, one day and get the ruffle right that time because I do really love the pattern I think that it turned out very nice um, so yeah didn't really do much for the rest of the week looking forward to this week but still try not to um, do things too overly much on my wrist. I think I'm gonna try to set a timer and limit my hand sewing to an hour at a time and then like at least an hour of break to kind of um, rotate that in there. So I wanna know what you guys sewed this week. Um, so leave a comment down below with some of the stuff that you were working on this week. And I hope that everyone is staying safe and staying happy. I'll see you next time.